Hey guys, my name is Spencer and in today's video I'm going to show you how I turned my dusty, crusty, unorganized workspace into my dream electronics workspace slash studio. And some of you might be thinking like, oh Spencer, it's not even that cool, it's just like a normal workspace and a normal workbench. But guys, trust me, I put a ton of time, research, and thought into this and I think I came up with some really cool and innovative ideas that I haven't really seen anywhere else. I've been super excited to share this with you because I think it's going to help give you some inspiration and some cool ideas for your own workspace or workbench. That's enough talking, let's get into the video. Come on, come on! So I really, really enjoy doing DIY and electronics projects. Unfortunately, my old workspace just kind of sucked for these projects and I just did not enjoy being in there. The main problem with my workspace is that it was in the same area that I had all of my 3D printers in my 3D print farm. Any of you that have a 3D printer know that they produce a lot of heat, they produce toxic fumes, and they can be a little noisy. But, you know, at least my good old workspace wasn't infested with cockroaches. Psych! It was and is still infested with cockroaches, and to be quite honest, it's just a little icky. It's true, people say it's icky. Obviously, I needed a change of scenery, and I decided to move my workshop from my 3D printer shop into a back room of my garage. And of course, make some big improvements as well. Things like organization, efficiency, productivity, you know? And also things like atmosphere, guys. You know, like if, if, if I wanna be Tony Stark, then all I have to do is, you know, just like make a, dang it, oh, I just wanna be Tony Stark, oh. <laughs> Guys, I'm just playing. But I will say this, you can make a workspace that's gonna make you feel better about yourself, it's gonna make you feel a little bit cooler, and it's gonna make those late night and weekend projects way more enjoyable. All right, so first and foremost, we need to talk about the most important part of any workspace or workbench, which is a flat space that you can work on. And guys, this could be anything from a simple table to a desk to a bench, even a piece of plywood over some cinder blocks. It doesn't have to be too crazy, it really just depends on what functionality and features you want your workbench to have. But because I wanted my new workspace and workbench to be super clean, super functional and robust, and versatile and ergonomic, I decided that a standing desk would be the best option. But after doing some research, I found that it was going to be a lot harder than I thought to find a specific standing desk for my specific needs and workbench. Most of the budget desks that you're going to find on Amazon are just going to be too flimsy for something like this and they're not going to be able to hold enough weight. But the higher end desks are going to be super expensive even just for the frame. Fortunately, I finally found the E7 Plus standing desk from FlexiSpot and it has been absolutely perfect for my new workbench. And for full disclosure, FlexiSpot is sponsoring this video, but after all of my research, this really is the desk that I wanted. So I reached out to FlexiSpot and luckily they liked the idea and wanted to send me over this desk for the project. Which is super sick, so huge shout out to FlexiSpot and their awesome team for making really nice desks. E7 Plus can hold up to 540 pounds. And even though I'm only like 40 pounds away from that limit, this desk handled it like a champ. Oh, oh no, is it gonna break? Yeah! No, seriously, I have been super impressed with how sturdy and robust this desk is. But not only that guys, this desk just looks really nice and you can tell it's really high quality. I ended up getting the bamboo top and it is super clean. But there are definitely some more budget options on FlexiSpot's website, as well as many other options to customize your desk to your specific workspace. For the length of the desk, you can go all the way up to 80 inches and down to 47 inches. Okay, calm down. And for the width, you can start at 28 inches and go all the way up to 35 inches. For reference, mine is 71 by 30 inches, and you know what guys, it's not the biggest, but it gets the job done. Ah, come on guys, I'm just talking about the desk. Gosh, a bunch of animals, savages. Whether you're tall or short, this desk should work for you because it has a great height range of 26 to 51.6 inches. The touch panel and buttons on the front are also really intuitive and easy to use and make it super easy to get just the right height to where you feel comfortable. Overall, the desk was really easy to assemble and the instructions were straightforward. 
While this is obviously not a full review of the E7 Plus desk, after completing my workspace and spending a ton of time with this desk, I can honestly say that I 100% recommend it. So if you need a high quality standing desk at a great price, I really think FlexiSpot is the way to go. And with the desk all set up, I was ready to make the frame. For the material, I decided to use 20 by 20 millimeter aluminum extrusions. You've probably seen this stuff before because it's used in most 3D printers and CNC machines. Aluminum has an excellent strength to weight ratio, and because these pre-made extrusions are widely used, there's lots of different options for hardware to use with them. And yes, aluminum extrusions are much more expensive than wood, but I really do feel the advantages outweigh the cost and I would definitely recommend it if you have the budget. I made a rough 3D model of the frame, mostly to have measurements for all of the cuts I needed, but also to get the rough layout and idea of how this was all gonna fit together. One really nice thing about using these aluminum extrusions is that it will make it relatively easy to make changes down the line. I used these corner brackets for the four main corners, then these angle brackets, T-nuts, and bolts to connect everything else. There were some cases where I needed to connect two extrusions together to make one longer piece, and for that I used these connectors and grub screws. I then attached the aluminum frame to the desk by drilling holes and using these nuts and bolts. Once I had finally completed the frame, I needed to paint a bunch of stuff. Like all of the shelves, the pegboard, the sliding drawer, and also the shelves for the display, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. The next thing I did was install the pegboard, and guys, while this wasn't the worst part of the project, it was definitely up there. It was just a royal pain, but I did eventually get it all on. I used these bolts and T-nuts, and overall it worked pretty well. For the shelves, I designed and 3D printed these little brackets that fit inside the aluminum extrusions. But unfortunately, when I went to install the shelves, I realized that I'd made a big mistake and there just wasn't enough support on the backside. The best way to fix this would have been to just put another rail on the back of the shelves, but because I really didn't want to recut and repaint all my shelves, I decided to come up with a simpler solution and design this little piece here. It fits into the pegboards and kind of acts like a shelf for the shelves. I also decided that I was worried about these shelves being stable enough, so I decided to add some more support. And this was another big win for the aluminum extrusions because all I had to do was cut out these small pieces and then connect them with the corner brackets. The next thing that I needed to make was my under desk sliding shelf. And going into this part of the project, I knew that it was just gonna be kind of difficult. It's kind of a complicated concept and I just designed it from scratch. I made the main base of the shelf with an aluminum rectangle and a painted piece of particle board. Then I attached these V-slot rollers to the shelf and it rolls on these aluminum extrusions rigged to the bottom of the desk. But as you can see, my first attempt didn't work. This is way too wobbly and this just isn't gonna work. So I had to go in and add two more of those rollers. And after that, it was working just the way I had imagined it. I'm also gonna be using some similar V-slot rollers from some old 3D printers and this worked out really well. I designed and 3D printed these parts that I used to mount these mic arms for my computer monitor and my PCB microscope. These were the things that made the most sense for me and my needs in my workspace, but the possibilities are endless and I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with for your own workspaces. You guys have probably noticed that I've designed and 3D printed a ton of stuff for this project. And honestly guys, I'm telling you, if you don't have a 3D printer in your workspace or know how to 3D model, you need to reconsider your life choices and at least get one. But what's better than one? Twins. Mo printers, mo problems, am I right? So let's ward off those evil demons with these totems. Gods of war. May your hammer be mighty. Because shiz hits the fan and 3D printers be pooping. The next part of my project was turning this small closet space into a display for my past and future projects. It also can hold six totes on the bottom shelves, which is gonna make storing things like future projects, camera and lighting equipment, and other random things much nicer. Although my new workspace is far from complete and there are still a ton of things I need to fine tune and finish, overall I'm really happy with it and I'm so excited to start some new projects and some new videos. Wait, what the? Eh, I guess it's chill. I kind of miss these little guys. Okay boy, play dead. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? We did it! Yeah!